Hello, wonderful students. I welcome you to today's virtual class. Um, quickly, I'll make um, a recall to the previous class I had with you. In the previous class, I taught you areas and types of agriculture, and uh, I did uh, explain to you the types of agriculture. I also explained to you the areas of specialization in agriculture. I taught you that uh, the two types, the two major types of agriculture we have is subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture, which you can also be referred to as uh, subsistence farming and commercial farming. And I also taught you the characteristics of each of these types of agriculture. Then again, I explained to you the different disciplines that make up agriculture. We have so many disciplines that make up agriculture, but in the course of last, in the previous class, I taught you about seven to eight of them, whereby I explained to you soil science, crop science, fishery. I also explained to you forestry and wildlife, agricultural education. I also differentiated veterinary medicine and also animal science. So in the course of today's topic, I will be teaching you the topic plant forms. In the course of today's class, I will be taking you the topic plant forms. Wherein I'm going to be, I mean, explaining to you the different parts of a plant. I would also explain to you the forms wherein plants can exist. I will also explain to you the functions of the different parts of a plant. I urge you in the course of this today's lesson to make as much jottings as possible as the, as the class progresses. Now, what are the parts of a plant? Of, of course, um, plants exist. There are two major parts of a plant. We have the ones that are underground and uh, the one that is above the ground. Now, the one that is below the ground or underground is referred to as the root. The root is the part found under the ground. And then we also have uh, the shoot. The shoot, as you well know, uh, as it is in the diagram in the picture here that I have here, I have the shoot system which is above the ground and the root system which is below the ground. The shoot system as it is as it is in this picture here, the shoot system carries the flower, the leaf, the fruits. Okay? The shoot system consists of the stems and the leaves. This part that you have here is what you have as the stem. And then any other thing that is moving towards this side that is not in a straight line in the stem, this part is called the branch stem. It's called the branch stem. And then we have this old place. This old place here is called the stem. So there are different parts of a plant. We have the roots, which has its own function. The root is also an organ. The leaf is an organ. The flower is also an organ in the plant. All of them have their different, um, their different uses. So I'll be explaining to you the functions of the root, of the stem, the fruit, the leaf, and the flower in the course of today's class. Now, I so said the stem carries the flowers used in reproducing new crop plant. If then there are different ways whereby plants can be used to reproduce new one, new ones. The plant, the root can be used to reproduce new plant. The stem can be used to reproduce new plant. The seeds that exist inside the fruit, because it is the, it is the fruit that bears the seed. The fruit that the seeds that exist that um, that matures inside the fruit, it can also be used to reproduce new plants. And in some plants, 
the leaf can also be used to reproduce new plants the fruit as it is here it comes out usually come out from a flower when the flower matures the fruit comes out from it now what are the functions of the roots we have different functions of the roots the root majorly is to make anchorage that is it helps to hold the crop firmly to the ground that is what we know as a anchorage that is like you have a house now the every house needs to have a strong foundation a house that does not have a strong foundation will sooner or later be blown away by a heavy wind so the root also helps to hold the crop firmly to the ground in the in cause of a heavy um every wind it helps it to be held firmly to the ground and then also the roots also absorb water minerals from the soil the water that the plant needs in order to survive and also the food nutrients that the plant needs to survive they are all transported from the ground to the root and to, from the ground to the stem through the roots okay yeah it's through the stem and through the roots i mean now some roots of crops store food for instance we have the carrot and cassava they store food as sugar okay they store the food as sugar through the process called photosynthesis in the course of today's class i would explain briefly photosynthesis i'm sure you have heard the word photosynthesis before but i still need to elaborate more on it for proper understanding again the roots of some crops help fix nitrogen of the air for the use of crops and uh, uh example is granite look at this granite here the granite is an underground and uh, seed crop the the the, the fruit the fruit it comes out on in the through the roots okay so the roots of the of the crops help to fix nitrogen of the air now the nitrogen ordinarily some crops cannot do this i am um, crops such as tomato crops such as maize they cannot fix nitrogen of the air for the for the crops use they need to get the nitrogen from inside the soil so but these crops they have been the crops such as soya beans and groundnut have been made in such a way that they can convert the nitrogen of the air for a use uh, as food for the crop now again some roots can be used to reproduce new crops like i told you before some roots can an example of such roots that can be used to reproduce new crop is uh, is potato potato can be the roots of potato can be used to reproduce new ones and the roots of some um weeds such as tridacts such as uh, elephant grass can also be used to reproduce new ones so what are the functions of the stem you know i told you there are four major parts of a crop we have the roots we have stems we have leaves and then we have flower the flower part now this, this is the second one the functions of the stem what does uh, the stem does for the crop now there are some there are some crops that uh, the stem acts as a source of a uh, stores food some some stems some stems sell food in them a typical example is sugar cane that uh, in which the plant stores food in its stem in form of sugars too so um so that for human use now functions of the stem he said i said it transfers food from leaves to other parts of the crops it transfers food from the leaves to other parts of the crop it's just like when uh yeah just like an intermediary the stem serves as an intermediary between the roots and then the leaves okay so 
the the mineral and water that is being gotten from the roots is taken to the leaves via the stems okay now the stems conduct water and minerals absorbed by the roots to other parts of the crop i just said that now it conducts the water from the roots to other parts of the crop an example of other part of the crop i'm referring to here is the leaves and then the flower okay the plant itself does not have much organs unlike we have in humans and other animals the major organs in the plant we have the leaves we have the stem you have the roots and then we have the flower unlike humans and other vertebrates whereby you have so many organs in their body so it also carries the leaves the flowers and fruits of the crops now another function of the stem is that some stem stores food in them an example is yam the yam is more like a stem a stem crop that uh, the the plant keeps on storing food in its stem and in the course of storing of food in its stem the stem begins to get enlarged and enlarged and enlarged until what you you have as a yam tuber and also we have the irish potato as an example of crops that stores food in a stem now again the stems of some crops are also used to reproduce new crops an example is cassava the stem of the cassava the stem of the cassava plant is caught and then is used to propagate or reproduce new ones so we have here i have it here the leaves is used for photosynthesis and that's the, that's the next one i'll be teaching you we also have the stem which is used for support for transport the roots like i told you before is used for anchorage absorption storage and conduction conduction of water and conduction of minerals now the next one is the functions of the leaves in this aspect i'll be explaining to you the process of photosynthesis without photosynthesis plants cannot store their food they cannot manufacture food now the leaves make food for green plants through photosynthesis remember what i said i said green plants it means that there are some plants that don't undergo photosynthesis and why are plants green why are they green now this is just basically because of a substance known as chlorophyll in the leaves of this plant it's something we call chlorophyll now without the chlorophyll plants cannot be green and without the chlorophyll plants cannot carry out what we know as photosynthesis photosynthesis is a process whereby um plants make use of the carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight to produce their food known as uh, starch okay they use the co2 the co2 gets into that's carbon dioxide gets into the into the leaves and then with the presence of water in the leaves with the stomata the the process i mean the chlorophyll the process helps to help the plant to produce starch and when the starch is produced it is being stored either in the roots or in the stem now the leaves also permit gaseous exchange in the crop through the stomata if you look at it here now in humans and in other animals we have what to call nostrils okay nostrils the nostrils is where you get I mean, the carbon dioxide and oxygen in them um, to be exchanged in humans this um, carbon dioxide which is co2 is being breathed out whereas we breathe in what oxygen but the reverse is the case in um in plants in plants plants get absorbed the co2 and then they um they bring the exhale out they 
they bring out what we know as oxygen out of their leaves or the stomata so the leaves wherein the stomata exist is is used for gaseous exchange in the crop now some leaves store food as in leafy vegetables you know examples of leafy vegetable we have the amaranthus we have the water leaf okay and then also we have onions as a way of storing food in the leaves now some leaves also help to be used to reproduce new plants an example is this bryophytes that we have here belonging to what we know as the bryophyllum we have the, this is an example of bryophyte okay it's an example of bryophytes whereby they use the leaf to propagate or reproduce new ones the leaves also helps in what we know as what transpiration that is the removal of what of water um, uh, the removal of water from the from the leaves now functions of the flower functions of the flower the flower has basically two or three functions okay without the flower some plants cannot reproduce new ones and uh, most most especially the fruits such as orange apple um even maize most of these um, plants that that uh, that that reproduce new ones through their seed they can only do that because they have what flower now the flowers attract insects to the crop plants for pollination okay you can see you can take a look at it here it's not only bees that visit flower we also have some insects that there are some other insects that visit flower we also have some birds that visit flower now what you do is that the pollination let me explain the process of pollination using this uh, picture for you we have the insects visit a plant that has pollen grains and then the pollen grain sticks to the um, insect for instance b whenever the insect goes there to collect the sugar or nectar in the in the flower and then the, the insect travels to another plant to another plant of the same type and in the course of going to another plant to also get more nectar he deposits the pollen which is in his leg or in his in his wings or other part of his body it deposits it here unknowingly to it and then there's what we know as what pollination that is the transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another whereby the pollen grains moves from the anther to what to the ovary of the plant of the flower okay now without this movement of uh, pollen grains from the anther to the ovary there will be nothing like uh, production or maturation of fruit fruit will not be able to uh, will not be able to come out from this flower that's why you find out that some 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 plants the flower will come out and at the end of the day they will fruit they will fruit that is they won't bring out fruits that's because there was no pollination that existed in the flower so pollination is very essential for seed to um to be produced from the flower now the flower also helps to produce the fruits and the seed like i said it helps to produce fruits and seeds now the next one is Now we have forms of crop plants. We have the monocot and then the dicot. Crops exist as a monocot and can also exist as dicot. Monocot is coined from the word mono, which is one, cotyledon, which is seed leaf. So monocotyledon means one seed leaf. And the second one is dicot plants. We have die as two and cotyledon as seed leaf so crops can exist as what as two seed leaf okay 
you can you can see them here the picture on the on this on this um this um on this slide we have the die cut and then we have the mono mono cut now we have different kind of root types for uh, mono cut and die cut we have the different kind of germination type now we have epigeal germination we have epigeal germination for die cut crop plants epigeal which is this is common to die cut crop plants and hypogeal which is this is common to mono cut crop plants now hypogeal hypogeal crop plants which is um, common to monocot is in such a way that the seeds remain on the ground after germination you can see that the seed is still on the ground this is the seed this is the seed this is the seed it remains on the ground during germination and it's common to monocot and then here which is epigeal the seed will, will be above as this as the crop is germinating the seed also comes out of the ground to form a kind of leaf okay so that is the difference between the germination type you can take a look at it again then we have the types of roots that they have we have the tap root and then the fibrous root we have the tap root and the fibrous root can take a look at it the, the top root is always the largest part of a root and is common to what to die cause crop plants whereas fibrous root is common to monocot crop plants can take a look at it the top root and then we have the fibrous root the monocot the fibrous root is common to the monocot then the tap root, the die cut is common to what the, the tap root is common to the die to tap root. We also have different kind of leaf venation. The die cut possess net venation, whereas the monocot plant possess parallel venation. That is parallel, you know, the leaf veins does not meet in monocot. It runs from the beginning to the end without the leaf the veins meeting unlike what you have there which is the net venation the veins in the die cut leaves they meet at some point you look at it this one meets by the time it reaches it meets and that is the difference between the leaf type or what we call leaf vein type of venation in the two that is die cut and monocot yeah, then this is the summarized differences between monocot and dicot crop plants. We have different um, differences. I've explained some of the differences for you, but this is a summarized difference. We have about six differences um, on this on this slide. Okay, I've explained most of it for you, and I put some I put some quiz for you in today's. Uh, in today's class i know you have it so much question you can reserve your questions for me or you can make use of the notes and questions box below to ask your question or you can reserve your questions for me and that way i will you can ask me when we get to the physical class i'll make sure to do enough justice to answering your question Thank you very much. Do have a wonderful time.